Welcome to this session on drugs for treating tuberculosis and principles of chemotherapy. I am Dr. Rajeshwari, former scientist from NART Chennai. Before we start the session, let us look into the definition of tuberculosis. Tuberculosis is a chronic infection characterized by granuloma formation affecting elderly, children, all age groups, affecting all the organs, not only lungs, especially in the host or human beings who are immunocompromised, especially cell mediated immunity. So, today's session, the first half we look into the drugs that are available for treating TB and in the second half we look into the principles of chemotherapy that govern the management. As you all are aware, tuberculosis is an ancient disease dating back to thousands of years and the usual management prior to 1940 would be to give them rest, adequate rest, especially sanitarium line of management and give proper diet to improve the immunity of the host. Drugs started coming in the treatment of TB from 1940 onwards and the first drug that was tried in the treatment of tuberculosis was streptomycin. The famous streptomycin trials are the first chemotherapeutic trials and that showed monotherapy will be a failure and if you treat patients with a single drug, they will all go into failure with resistant organisms. Then followed the era of PAS and INH, patients are treated with two drugs, streptomycin INH or PAS INH or three drugs, streptomycin, PAS and INH. This continued till the 1960s and we had a wonder drug called rifampicin and this is a bactericidal drug that gave a an opportunity for us to treat the patient within 6 months period and that changed the picture completely. Let us look into the number of drugs that came after 60 also. For 50 years there were not many drugs, then in the last decade there are a number of drugs that are being tried and they are in phase 2 and phase 3 trials especially bidaquilin and dilanamide, these two are the drugs approved by the US and European regulatory authorities. Now, this diagram clearly tells you the number of drugs and their availability in various periods. Way back started with streptomycin, pass INH and came the pyrazinamide, then, then rifampicin. Now, after 60s, the management totally was different because of the rifampicin and pyrazinamide. We look at the regimens now. After 60s in 80s, we started getting quinolones in the picture. Number of quinolones, there are about 16 or 17 quinolones and about 3 or 4 are useful in the treatment of tuberculosis. Now, currently we have bidaquilin and other drugs. If you look at the lower half of the slide, you will see the number of regimens. In the earlier years in 50s and 60s, it was a standard chemotherapeutic regimen consisting of two drugs namely INH or PASS or streptomycin or I and INH and these regimens were given for a period of 12 to 18 months. And they also had a relapse rate of more than 20 percent, the cure rate was uh, only around 50 to 60 percent. So, there was a need to improve the treatment regimens, luckily we had rifampicin in 1960s and the picture changed totally. Currently, the line of management is use four drugs namely rifampicin, INH, pyrazinamide, ethambutol and we are able to reduce the duration of treatment to 6 months and they are known as short course chemotherapy. We will look into the details in subsequent slides. Now, the recently available drugs are given here and they are being tried as I told you earlier, they are in phase 2 and phase 3 trials. WHO classified the anti TB drugs in 2011 as 5 groups. The group 1 was fully oral drugs, INH, rifampicin, ethambutol, pyrazinamide. As I told you, these are the four key drugs in short course chemotherapy. The group 2 consists of injectables like streptomycin, caramycin. Group 3 fluoroquinolones mainly levo, moxi, gatti and ofloxacin. Group 4 fully bacteriostatic second line drugs like ethinamide and cycloserine. And group 5 other anti tb drugs with limited data on efficacy like linozolid, clofazamine, etc. Now, the anti tb drugs for resistance that classification is slightly different. Currently, we have multi drug resistant tuberculosis. Now, what is multi drug resistant TB? It is 
bacteria that are resistant to two key drugs in the chemotherapy namely rifampicin and INH, two bactericidal drugs. When patients develop organisms resistant to both rifampicin and INH, they are called MDRTB patients. And the classification here is slightly different as you can see group A drug is fluoroquinolones, group B is second line drug injectable drugs like amikacin, group C is other second line agents like ethinamide, protheinamide and group D once again is divided into D1, D2, D3 consisting of pyrazinamide, ethambutol, midacinilin and other drugs. Now in MDRTB the regimens are being designed including all these four groups of drugs that will be a separate session for you. Currently there are a number of drugs that are in the pipeline, some are in the discovery phase, some are in the preclinical development stage, some are in the clinical development stage, phase 1, phase 2 and phase 3. If you look at the newer drugs, bidaquinilin and dilamanid and pritomanid, they are in phase 3 trials and they may be available shortly for our regular use. Now, this figure clearly explains the mechanism of action of the anti-TB drugs. Look at the isonic acid and ethambutol, they prevent the formation of the cell wall. If you look at the pyrazinamide, it disrupts the plasma membrane formation. If you take uh, quinolones, they act at DNA garase level inhibiting DNA synthesis. If you take rifampicin, it acts through RNA polymerase inhibits transcription. The other drug, um, bedaquilin, a newer drug acts at the ATP synthase level. Now we come to aims of TB treatment. The main aim is to cure the patient and restore the quality of life and productivity. Also to bring down mortality and also to bring down the morbidity, the sequelae of tuberculosis. From the patient's point of view, it is also important to prevent relapse of tuberculosis. So, from the patient's point of view, cure and then restore quality of life, prevent death and prevent relapses. These four are the most important aims. Now, from the community point of view, the aims are a bit slightly different. We have to aim in reducing the transmission of TB to others by giving bactericidal drugs and killing the rapid kill, achieving rapid kill of bacteria and making the patient smear and culture negative. Also we have to look at the transmission of drug resistance, development of drug resistance from the community point of view. This is also achieved by rapid kill of the organisms by giving short course chemotherapy drugs of rifampicin, INH and pyrazinamide. Now let us go into the principles of chemotherapy in tuberculosis. The first aim is safety and efficacy. Any drug that is prescribed or any regimen that is prescribed to a patient should be safe for the patient and it also should be effective. Now prior to start of treatment, please look at the liver function and renal functions and ensure they have a proper functioning liver and kidney. This is important and then you start the chemotherapy. As I told you earlier, drugs consisting of rifampicin, INH, ethambutol, pyrazinamide, short course chemotherapy. The other principle is to use multiple drugs, combination of drugs. Now why are we using multiple drugs? We will come to that in the next slide. Never give a single drug. Single drug will always lead to failure and resistance. Always your aim is to give combination of drugs. Now it is not only enough to give drugs. It is also important to ensure treatment regularity and adherence and help the patient to complete his treatment and WHO recommends directly observe treatment or DOTS in this regard. A community provider or a somebody from the patient's house or a health worker helps a patient in completing the treatment. It is also equally important to look for associated comorbidity like HIV and diabetes and treat them accordingly. So, to summarize safety efficacy is very important, use multiple drug combination that is also very important and see that the patient completes his treatment and help him by giving dots. Now why do we give a multiple drug or combination of drugs in, the, in tuberculosis? There are a number of reasons ranging from bacteriological reasons, environmental reasons and pharmacological reasons. 
the most important is bacteriological where you find naturally occurring drug mut resistant mutants that has to be attacked and also the subgroup of populations bacillary populations with different metabolic activity we will see these two in later slides these are very important in designing a regimen environmental and pharmacological is also equally important environmental is it depend the drugs penetration depends upon so many factors it may be the membrane or it may be the blood brain barrier and accordingly you have to prescribe drugs the third reason which is also equally important is the pharmacological reason where a patient is given all the drugs together as a single dose to ensure peak serum activity which is usually above the mic of the bacteria which ensures killing of the bacteria now what are naturally occurring drug resistant mutants in tb if you see a uh, cavitatory lung tuberculosis the cavity will be teeming with bacteria and it will be in millions when you have millions of bacteria viable bacteria there are a few that may develop resistant to any one of the anti tb drugs which are called naturally occurring drug resistant mutants in tuberculosis so this is seen whenever the bacillary load is very high especially in smear positive pulmonary tb lesions dr mutants as i told you earlier are present naturally to different drugs and in different frequency in an untreated smear positive pulmonary tuberculosis patient more the number of bacteria more the dr mutants now this figure clearly tells you the rates of spontaneous mutations conferring resistance to anti tb drugs if you look at isoniazid if you look at rifampicin ethambutol the drug mutation rates are different for different drugs but as you, as was mentioned earlier spontaneous mutation develop whenever the bacterial count is very high more than 10 to the power of 8 now this figure clearly explains the mechanism of amplification of resistance the previous slide we saw the spontaneous mutations conferring resistance to anti tb drugs now in this slide we will be looking at the amplification of resistance to the drugs if you look at this picture whenever only inh is used and if the patient harbors inh resistant organisms the this monotherapy amplified the resistance and you find more of inh resistant organisms whereas when you treat them with three drugs namely inh rifampicin and pyrazinamide all the three are affected and ultimately with multi drug therapy no bacteria resistance is seen to all the three drugs after the end of treatment but if you look at here already you are starting with inh resistant patient you are treating only with inh inh resistant bacteria multiply in larger numbers when you treat this patient with two drugs namely inh and rifampicin this paves the way for development of rifampicin resistance as well so the net result would be you have a patient with multi drug resistant tb when you use only a single drug or two drugs so the principle would be to prevent the amplification of resistance use more than two bacterial cidal drugs use at least minimum four drugs in the earlier phase now let us look at the role of the multi drug therapy in tb treatment the start of the treatment mutants resistant to single drug capable of multiplication are present so if you give monotherapy it will lead to failure and more of resistance will be seen so if you give two drugs concurrently chances of survival and selection of drug resistant organisms are very very small the rule is mutants resistant to one drug or susceptible to other drugs and vice versa you use this principle in the treatment of tuberculosis where you give multi drugs more than four drugs two bactericidal drugs at least in, a, in that combination to attack to achieve a kill of all the bacteria in the start of treatment thank you